Finesse. My good Vulcan, about time you showed up. Come here. Good Ursus and I have something to show you. I hope Ursus hasn't beaten him too much. The last victim was in such a state that I couldn't even torture him. Oh, don't worry. But it may take you some time to wake him up. I'm sorry. I'm late. I overslept. Don't worry. As long as you oversleep alone. As a deacon of the Holy Church, you can't afford the least scandal. And we can't always throw your whores into the well. Today is the day. The key to absolute knowledge will be ours. The key to immortality. That's not what I seek. I know. But remember, limitless life, limitless knowledge. The entrance to the basement is open. What? Open? Are you nuts, Ursus? Hurry, finish tying up the prisoner and stand guard at the chapel door. No one can come in or out but me, Vulcan, Sir Roderick, or his slutty wife. Good. Let's get to the important part. Prepare the prisoner as only you know how. Torture him, but save the best for the meeting of the Order. And try the same thing you did to the Saxon moron. The guests have come long and far. They'll be thirsty for the blood of our prisoner. The first transmuted being in history. The first immortal. What? And what about Frey Seokan? Oh, in the well. And this rascal was eavesdropping. I'll be in the workshop getting ready for the ritual. Do a good job. His cries will inspire me. Separate the two boards as much as possible. Then you put the prisoner's ankle between them. Then you turn the handle in the opposite direction so the nails pierce the flesh. And he bleeds.
Tell me, your nurse. You called me that upstairs. Remember, we're not in public, my good Vulcan. You're right, Lord Vile. As of tomorrow, I will cease to hmm. pretend that I'm Father Hidner's parish priest of St. Fergus Church in Inverloch, and you stop pretending you're Deacon Yaga. Do you think this time we'll get it right? Sure. We only needed the coins. I got the rest of the ingredients down. But I won't prepare the potion until the very last moment, right before the ritual. Do you really think they're from the devil? Without a doubt. You've seen the pentagrams on one of the sides. The same symbols have been used with different meanings by different cultures. And don't you think that Satan, Prince of the Cosmos, wouldn't claim the symbol that identifies him? I don't doubt his power, but... Don't argue, Vulcan. It's just that, since Brother Siokan found the coins in an old Viking boat, maybe that should be our new destination. Maybe there we can find the civilization that wrote the Treaty of the Flesh. Tomorrow, my good Vulcan, we'll be immortal. We won't need the book anymore. But... How much more knowledge can be hidden in there? Oh, is there any higher knowledge than the one that allows you to reign over death? According to what I read in the Treaty of the Flesh, two people can drink from a potion created with one coin. Tell me something I don't know. The kid will drink first. Who will drink second? When we're sure it works, I'll drink. Then? We'll prepare more potion with the second coin. You, my faithful helper, will drink from it. Then Sir Roderick. Sir Roderick? Why him? Without him, we wouldn't have this church falcon. Nor an alibi. Nor anything else. He deserves it. What would happen if we prepared the potion with the coin, but excluded one of the ingredients? Which one? The aim of salt and sulfur is to purify the soul before its return. Without those ingredients, the drinker would mm. come back with a contaminated soul. A demon. A monster. Interesting. What would happen if we prepared the potion with the coin? Which one? Mercury ensures that the transmuted being comes back to life with his memory intact. It would be horrible if we forgot to add mercury to our potion. But, as I'm sure you understand, I can't allow myself to make such a mistake. What would happen if we prepared the potion with the coin, but ex- Which hmm. one? Iron is used to forge the soul again, and gold to make it come back to life. I'm not sure what would happen if we skipped one of those. A soulless being? Or perhaps the body wouldn't come back to life? What would happen if we prepared the potion... Which one? According to the Treaty of the Flesh, fire is used to honor an unknown entity. Satan. 
I'm not that sure. But I am. Plus, we need fire hmm. to melt the coin of judgment. What would happen if which one? I'd like to clarify something about the kid. I feel weird torturing a kid. Maybe we can find another volunteer. I don't know what bothers me more, Vulcan. The sudden hint of a conscience within your dark soul, or your questioning of my orders. We said we would not use servants of Sir Roderick as victims. Hmm. The kid was eavesdropping, Vulcan. What will happen when the mother starts looking for him? Oh, you're right. Oh, well, luckily we're in no shortage of poison. The kid is taking the place that Seokan deserved for finding the coins. He was one of ours. But we can't just get a random kid and make him immortal. He'll be too powerful. Tell me something I don't know. He'll be tied until we prove the potion has worked and has no secondary effects. Then, we'll throw him in the well, where he'll enjoy immortality mm. without becoming a nuisance. The kid is not easy to torture. I mean, I've never tortured such a tiny body. I hope I don't make a mistake. Oh, I trust your skill, Vulcan. I'll never understand. Why he can be so loyal to you, while he still believes in the Christian God. I remember, I saved his life. Some people value such a thing. Maybe we don't need Ursus to mount guard at the church door. I close the door, take the key, and problem solved. No, I'd rather have him there. Just in case Sir Roderick comes, I mean, Lord Behemoth. Maybe we shouldn't have killed the Saxon moron. You seem to think otherwise when you tortured him. What if he served someone, and now they're looking for him? He'd have confessed. Whom could he be serving? The Inquisition. Bah! If the Inquisition knew of our existence, they'd come with a small army instead of infiltrating a moron among our members. It's very strange that our Spanish friend hasn't arrived yet. He's always the first one. We'll never be thankful enough to him. It's a shame we must kill him tomorrow. What? We'll be immortal, Vulcan. We won't need anybody's money anymore. The Order of the Flesh will die tomorrow. I don't trust Sir Roderick. I do. Besides, we need him. There are some doors that no commoner can open, no matter how immortal he is. My father was the Duke of Fuentenegra. Your father is Satan. Miguel de Fuentenegra died in the dungeon I saved you from. What will happen to Lady Cat here? That cold fish. I guess her legitimate master and husband, Lord Beermoth, will kill her tomorrow. Did you know, she can't even satisfy him anymore. Why don't you go out and get some fresh air, Hines? Lord Bile. And no, I won't rest until the ritual is over. Kill me. I won't hurt you. Calm down. No, please. Shh. Listen to me. I am here to save you. But I need you to calm down. I wasn't spying. 
think of your mother. She'll be looking for you. What? My mother? Now that you've calmed down, answer my questions, and I'll do whatever is in my hands to save you. No. Save my mother. She is not in danger. I said that so you would shut up. You know who I am. You are Deacon Iago, Father Hines's helper. Sundays after Mass, you read books and tell legends to those of us who can't understand the written word. Can you tell me which book I read to you? Yes, Sir Iago. It's been months since you started reading us the Divine Comedy. But Dante, the Italian, I hope one day I can learn to read like you. Do you remember any of the stories I told you? Yes. My favorite one is that of Bertrand the Wizard. Refresh my memory. Bertrand, native to Languedoc in France, could move objects with his mind. The Inquisition accused him of sorcery and put a rope around his neck, but made sure his feet touched the ground so that he wouldn't choke. They cut off his right leg and flung it out in front of him. Show your power by attracting it back to you. Bertrand died three days later when his left leg failed. He never stopped staring at the right leg on the ground. Are you sure it was the right leg that was cut off? Hmm. Is it that important? What's your name? Fergus Quinlan, sir. I was given that name because I was born on St. Fergus Day. Hines told me you were spying on him. I didn't want to, sir. I was hiding in that room because I didn't want to clean the great cauldron. They always make me do it, and I'm sorry. I didn't want to, sir. What did you hear Hines saying? I don't know, sir. I didn't understand a thing. He and Sir Roderick talked about coins, a potion, and the devil. Now it's your turn to ask me. I... I don't understand what's happening here at all, sir. Father Hines and I are the founders of a satanic order that meets here, in the basement of this church. The Order of the Flesh. If I fail at helping you escape, tonight, after torturing you for hours, we'll make you drink a certain transmutation potion. Then, we'll kill you. And then, you'll come back to life. Many years ago, I read several pages from a forbidden book that is now in the Vatican. One of those pages mentioned a potion that would transmute its drinker into a being able to overcome death. But among its ingredients, there was a golden coin with a strange symbol. Once a year, the night before the great hunt in honor of St. Eden and St. Alec, we meet here to offer sacrifices to Satan. But enough talking. I must find a way to get you out of here. Do me a favor. When you see me around here, shout as if I was tearing your soul out.
No! No! What am I doing here? Give me a good reason. Ines wants me to torture and kill a kid, the cook's son. There's no way I'll do that. Wait, you don't defy Ines for me, but you do for a dirty servant. I already told you, I'm sick of killing, and I don't want the burden of a child's death upon me. He's a servant. He leads and will lead a miserable life. You're taking nothing from him. Anyway, who cares? I have more than one reason to save that kid. He has your same eyes. The kid? And your hair. I can't kill someone who reminds me so much of you. Our kids could look like him. Kids? You and me? That requires a certain level of commitment. Much more than anything you've shown me. Anyway, who cares? When the Inquisition me as a child. It was the death of another child, also a servant's son, that helped me escape. Whether it's God's or the devil's doing, it's only fair that I pay back the favor by saving this kid's life. One death more or less is not going to tip the scale. Anyway, who cares? The guests arriving? It seems that Don Guzman arrived during the night with a lot of servants. I hate it when members of the Order come with such a large entourage. The more servants, the higher the risk of someone learning about the Order. Have you seen your husband? Yes. He's in a terribly bad mood. I guess none of his whores could give him a hard on. He's forbidden access to the castle to anybody but the guests and their entourage. Yes, I know. Not even the church deacon and founder of the order. What I'm giving you is... is not easy to craft. I've never worked with gold in such a clean, detailed fashion. And the inscription... I copied the idea from St. Alistair McNair. I... I don't know what to say. Tomorrow, during the hunt, we'll run away together. But first, I need to save that kid. Please, help me. You wanted the cape, didn't you? I need your cape to save the kid. Hide in one of those confessionals. Once the kid escapes, I'll tell Hinas I killed him accidentally. He'll tell Ursus to search for a new victim, and you'll be able to return to the castle. And tomorrow we will be free? Tomorrow. I made that metal glove for you. 
you'd never use it against me, would you? I'll take that as a maybe not. Your leg, it's bleeding, isn't it? Well, I'd say it is. Wait, are you having one of those days? Is that your secret? <laughs> Just out of the blue. How many years have gone by since Hinas forbade you from hurting yourself? Maybe I should tell him? Or are you going to give me whatever it is you're hiding? have another torture instrument on your other leg? <laughs> what a shame. But please let me know if you find one on any of your other members. That kid just doesn't know how to give in to torture. If he carries on like this, I don't know what I'm capable of. Good morning, good man. At your service, sir. They seem really heavy. Good or bad? Good or empty? You know it's heavy. It's the damn hangover. Head. Oh, I can't even lift it. So Roderick, God save him for many years. Forced me to drink six glasses in a row before buying the food. Maybe he fears someone will poison him. Are you mad? Who could be so evil? Anyway. I feel horrible today. Can I take a nap? 
What do you transport? What my transport? Delicious wine from Wiesenlachen, brewed at St. Mungo's Abbey. But of course you know the star. When St. Imden traveled through Wiesenlachen, he asked the girl for water. She didn't want to give him any because the plague haunted the village. But then St. Imden insisted, so she gave him the water, which he transformed miraculously into wine, and he drank it. And he had a hand. And he died, not so miraculously, the very next day. Ah! Details! I think I saw you walking around the lake last night. What were you looking for? I was really looking to get a breath of fresh air. After selling some of my goods to Sir Roderick, I was a bit dizzy. But at the same time, I was looking for stench in the cave. You remember the Saint Columbia defeated a monstrous demon on the shores of Pagans. That saints not the stench betrayed it. And you found a similar stench here? You're crazy. You can only breathe goodness here. I was waiting to find some pagan dough and then die. When I knew I was coming, most of my fathers insisted I look for Saint Felix's cave. Right. I've looked for it too. In vain. What? Same as me. The so called dizziness went away, but I fell asleep on the ground. A lovely night, out in the night. If it's bitter, I'd be dead. I feel like shit today. Will you stay tomorrow for the hunt? I'd love to. I'm a devotee of St. Eden and St. Alec. Plus, I heard that noblemen from all across Europe are coming. But as soon as I get all these barrels in the cart, I'm going to go back to St. Mungo. Could you lend me those strips? I'm afraid not. I need them to tie the barrels. I'm lost without them. They were blessed at St. Alistair McNair's church. The saint of commitment and the turtle bones. He found the corpse of his betrothed 40 years after she died, thanks to the ring he'd given her. With the inscription... From Alistair, with love. I know. An inspiring character. Kill me. I didn't do anything. Thank you. 
Fergus, put this on. It's time to get you out of here. We'll make Ursus believe that you're Cater and that you're sick. When you're inside the keg and the cart starts moving, say 100 Hail Marys, go deep into the woods and walk all the way to Aberdeen. I will give you something extremely valuable. Sell it and embark on a ship to Europe. I don't care what you did before, Deacon Iago. You're a good man. Don't be stupid. Come with me. We'll go to the Vatican and convince the Pope to burn that cursed book. No. I must finish something and make sure they don't follow you. But when the bastard fell, he grabbed my medallion and took it with him deep into the well. Oh, I'm sorry, my good Vulcan. I'm so, so sorry. I'll forge a new one. Don't worry. No. I'm sorry for you. Uh, sus! Please forgive my little trick, Falcon. You betrayed me. I didn't mean to betray you. I got carried away. I, I threw him in the well because... Stop! Please. Maybe you'll be glad to know that I didn't play fair myself. You were growing too distant. I had to see just how much. And you didn't pass the test. Your fling with Lady Katia. Your disdain for our benefactor, Sir Roderick. Your arrogance. And now, your betrayal. You must become my faithful disciple once more. Never. I hate you. You will do it. You will. You'll take the child's place in the ritual. You will drink the transmutation potion, die, and be reborn beside me. And you know why, don't you? The transmutation will not turn me into your slave. Unless I forget to add mercury to the potion. I'll lose my memories! Worry not. I will be waiting for you. I will embrace you and remind you that you are my faithful son. You will serve me for all eternity. As of tomorrow, once we are transmuted, we will recover the Treaty of the Flesh, and you will translate it in full for me. I am certain that it hides even more powerful secrets. The world will be ours. <laughs> my good luck. What about the boy? We have more urgent business today, but we'll find it. I may even grant you the honor of killing him. We have all the time in the world. Deacon Yago? Huh? Who are you? Allow me to reintroduce myself. I am Gabriele Scarpetta, last remaining guardian of the Order of Yago. You seem very sure of my identity. Of course. Your phone call, the evidence, the portrait. Everything leads me to you. You left a portrait of me under a bench. When did you have it made? <laughs> In 1537, but it wasn't me. At that same time, Michelangelo was painting the Last Judgment on the Sistine Chapel. Our founder convinced him of sketching a facial composite with every detail he remembered of you. But what about those tests in the hotel room? A and here? One can never be sure enough. I've tested your intelligence, your perseverance, your talent for languages, even your humanity. You, empathy for me, my friend Dog Die. You bugged Kovac's telephone, and that's how you found me. True. And the next morning, I tried to do the same with your cell phone. Theft is easy first thing in the morning. People are asleep and unsuspecting. But, to my surprise, I soon realized that someone had beat me to it. Your SIM card had been cloned. 
I wouldn't turn it on if I were you. Otherwise, whoever did this will know your location. Thanks. I guess. I'd never heard of the Order of Yago before. It's a secret reserved for the custodians of the treaty. Fergus Quinlan's successors. Another name that should ring a bell. The Order was established in 1534 by mandate of the Pope. And the first custodian of the Treaty of the Flesh was Fergus Quinlan himself. To what extent is it secret? Pope Clement VII himself decided that no other Pope should ever know of its existence. The poor souls have enough as it is, as I'm sure the current Pope could tell you. The Order of Iago has a double aim, finding he who gave his name to the Order so as to give him the Treaty of the Flesh, or protecting the book at all costs. It's amazing that Fergus made it that far. Our founder must have been a man of formidable spirit. A servant who fled and then managed to convince a pope and to protect the treaty until dying of old age in the Vatican. I assume it was Fergus who ordered that I receive the treaty. And right you are. Why me? He knew my past. Because you accepted dying for him, I suppose. There are entire religions based on such trifles, or so they say. How was Fergus so sure that the transmutation potion had worked, and that I would survive for centuries to come? Our founder returned to the place where he met you years before and heard a legend. That of the ghost of Deacon Iago, who rose from the church's ashes screaming, Who am I? And disappeared into the woods, never to be seen again. And no one searched for me until now? He did, all of his life, to no avail. And little by little, his successor stopped looking for you as well. Kovac said that you were his... I don't know, informant? He told me that you'd given him information for his book. The bare minimum to convince him of placing the Treaty of the Flesh on the cover of his book. I had to lure you somehow. He said that you had contacted him in the Vatican. As did all my predecessors every time someone asked about the Treaty of the Flesh. It didn't take me long to realize it couldn't be you. Although it did turn out to be very useful in finding you. Wait a second. You still haven't said where the Treaty is. Is it still in the Vatican? No. It was relocated long ago. Where was it in the Vatican? Before the Order was established, it was in the Vatican's secret archives, alongside hundreds of forbidden books. But thanks to our founder, it was moved to a secret vault within the actual archives, and protected by means of an entry mechanism that he designed with you in mind. Why did they move it? During the pontificate of Pope Pius VI, the papacy faced several scandals, embezzlement, theft, schemes within the organization itself. The custodian of the treaty convinced himself that the Vatican was no longer a safe place. Where is it now? In 1786, one of my predecessors hid the book in the catacombs of a city that was transferring the skeletons of its cemeteries to those very same catacombs. There, they recreated the same entry mechanism that the founder had designed for you. That can't be. They took it to Paris? My Paris? And there it still lies. Look for the Triskelion in the tunnels, and you will find the Treaty of the Flesh. Goodbye, Deacon Yago. Wait, wait, won't you be traveling with me? No. I am free of my burden at last. The Order of Yago dies today. You will never see me again. Thank you for everything, Scarpetta. I will find the book, and dedicate my life to protecting its secret. I don't doubt it. Then why don't you look happy about it? Don't you realize that your life gains meaning, and that my life loses it? May God be with you, Deacon Yago. It has been an honor to meet you.
Hmm. Well... The... the certificate says that... Say one more word and there's no deal. I'm leaving in four hours and I don't have time to waste. Shit. What a piece of shit. Anyway, Mrs. Yesterday... Yes? The pictures didn't lie. Neither did the certificate. It's a magnificent sculpture. Now let's talk about the price. Your husband was very clear. He asked for 400,000 euros. More than what it's worth. 100,000 euros, that's my offer. And not a cent more of your continental currency. I don't care what my husband said. 900,000 euros or no deal. No way. 200,000 euros. 800. 300. 700. 400. 600. 500. Sold. You'll find a check for 500,000 euros in this envelope. And don't give me that look. I've been haggling for years. I'll send my men to pick up the piece this afternoon. I gave a card to your husband. I'll activate it to show the phone number if he needs to call. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Mrs. Yesterday. We should meet someday when I'm back in Paris. We have so much in common. Are you sure this is where we're supposed to meet? Sure, Chunk. Do you want me to phone her? Hi, Boris. Ah, you see? Happy birthday, Mole! Hi, John. <laughs>